Okay, perfect. So we're three minutes after starting time. I think it's uh, good enough to get it on now. We're very excited to have you all here in this webinar today, which is about home day's journey with data. It's about looking back where they have been and what they have done to reach a whole new level from basic reporting, as we call it, to advanced BI. And before we jump right into the content, um, one note to everybody listening, you will get the okay. slides afterwards and you will get the slides afterwards and you will also get the um, recording of the webinar. So no worries. If you miss something, no problem. You will be able to see it afterwards again. So before we jump in, we will do a very brief introduction round. Um, Nate, setting this whole thing up today, would you mind starting? Yeah, not a problem. Um, my name is Nate. I'm the director for Fivetran in EMEA. We came over to Dublin, actually, uh, to set up the European office. We've been here for about a year. Uh, we're one of the biggest partners for Snowflake for loading data into Snowflake data warehouses. And we've also worked with Leroy on a number of projects. So we're very excited to be in here in Europe supporting the whole market. Um, yeah, that's that's everything for me. Perfect. Maybe we can add it over to Thomas then. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Thomas Friedel, and I'm with Snowflake as a sales engineer here in the, the Dach region, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and the countries um, eastern of it. Um, I help prospects and customers to understand uh, what the value is of Snowflake for their business. And I also engage with the partners in our ecosystem and that's why I'm here today, so to say, and support you guys with this webinar. And I'm happy to answer questions if there's any coming up. Perfect. So, Alex, you're the main person today, but before we jump into your content, are you willing to give us a two sentence wrap up about yourself? Hi, my name is Alex. Um, I've been working for the Hyundai, which is a real estate agency in Germany, and but we'll talk about it a bit later. Uh, I've been developing uh, business intentions here at this company for like something like half a year. And before this, I have a different background uh, working as project product manager manager and business intelligence manager in other com countries, uh, companies and industries. Perfect, thank you. So before we jump to again, uh, one sentence about myself. I'm Christian Lubash, founder and managing director of Leroy Consulting. We are a consulting agency focused purely on data and analytics. So I think now ultimately it makes sense that the, you see these kind of faces in the in the chat room here. You know, everybody brings a piece together to make home day's journey possible. So can you flip further? Let's have a brief look at the agenda before we jump in. So we'll get it started by understanding what home day does, right? It will not be like a 30 minute session about what home day does exactly, but of course you need to understand what they are doing and what their mission is and what the idea behind their business model is. Then we'll take a look at you know what challenges they had in the past. So actually, what did it, what made it even um, necessary to talk to all of us here? What uh, happened? What worked? What didn't work? That's kind of a status quo analysis, just a little bit back in the days. And then we'll find out on how they came to understand. Okay, I need some support. I need some assistance. And how they chose the technological stack on the one side, and also how they chose uh, us as a consulting partner in making that happen. We'll then take a deeper look at the technical setup itself so you guys can understand what exactly they did. And lastly, we'll see how that influenced them. So what was the benefit of doing all this? Is there actually a benefit? Or was it just simply, you know, putting on a couple of uh, dollars here and there? I can already foretake, of course, there was a big difference, but Alex will go on to present much more details than I did. So we will wrap this up by question and answers in the end so if you have any question just put it in the question section so what I learned already that the chat room doesn't seem to work in a way that I can read the questions at least but I hope the question section uh, basically does the trick and you can put everything in there and we'll collect them and we will make sure we try to answer everything possible okay so anything that you have on your mind whether it's a question about the tools or a home day or us just put it in the question section and we'll take care afterwards. So, perfect. I think that's enough. Let's get it on. Time is valuable. Alex, I'd say, stage is yours. Okay. Hi, my name is Alex once again. So, uh, once again, I present the Home Day, which is uh, 
uh, real estate agency in Germany. So we consider ourselves as a new age real estate agency and we see uh, our mission as uh, reinventing and changing the real estate market in Germany once and forever. Uh, why, uh, what we want to do is to bring completely new experience to the customers, which is uh, also like in real estate business, these are sellers and buyers of the properties. Uh, we want this experience to be smooth, uh, transparent, and most of all, efficient. And through this, we also want to decrease uh, the cost of this transaction because in G Germany, this cost is incredibly high so far as like it is up to 8% in certain uh, locations in Germany, and uh, this is absolutely insane. Uh, how we want to achieve this? Uh, first of all, uh, we look into the state-of-the-art tool, the tools when it comes to the lead acquisition or uh, prospect acquisition. Uh, first of all, it is a performance marketing. And on the other side, we look into the operational excellence, uh, and we try to be as efficient as possible when it comes to the executing the real estate transaction, basically uh, supporting the uh, sell uh, buy activity of the property. And combining it with the customer first culture, uh, we believe that we are on the path to success. As you might guess from the uh, key uh, leverages we want to use in the uh, our path of like, fulfilling our mission, uh, which is basically advanced performance marketing and uh, operational uh, excellence numbers and data for us is uh, not just a uh, sound, it's a real thing for us. And uh, you cannot imagine the, doing the performance marketing without uh, knowing the impact of the investments you do in the certain channels like uh, Facebook, Google, whatever. Uh, and on the other hand, operational excellence is not possible without understanding how actually operations go. Like basically how many tasks we do, uh, how long does it take, uh, if we're capable of fulfilling these tasks, and etc. etc. Uh, lots of numbers coming in, and these numbers are crucial for the company's success. And that's why I'm pretty much proud and happy to work at home day as a BI lead, uh, just because the challenge is so interesting and so cool. Uh, but uh, maybe let's go into some history about business intelligence uh, at home day. So from the very beginning, uh, for the founders of the company, it was clear that numbers are the key. And uh, we uh, did our best to establish technological infrastructure to actually keep the footprint of the customers uh, from the very beginning to the very end. From the very beginning, I mean the uh, customer journey to the our, to our landing page, uh, basically conversion on the landing page. Uh, by this, I mean the submitting the data about the uh, intention to sell property or uh, buy property uh, on one hand, and on the other hand, it's a journey of the customer within the uh, uh, real estate transaction from uh, discussion with us as a real estate agency uh, to the actual uh, selling the property and even afterwards. Uh, to do so, we uh, were using tracking systems on the marketing or like uh, uh, landing pages side. And uh, for the business process within the company, we created our very own CRM system where we track all the activities. Of course, uh, all systems, they have the databases and these databases could be reached. Uh, like for tracking, we used to have Postgres database and uh, for uh, operational data, we are using MySQL. And this database are kind of comparatively easy to query, and this was the way to access the data in the very beginning of time uh, at home day. But over time, number of questions uh, uh, grew, and just querying directly the database with the people who know how to have, do this and have access there uh, was not efficient anymore. And uh, like comparatively quickly, like it took, a, as far as I remember, like well, as far as I know, uh, about like six, nine months to make a decision of establishing the proper data warehouse and proper BI setup, uh, we decided to go into the proper business intelligence. And uh, in the initial setup, the aim was to satisfy the needs of the uh, performance marketing team uh, and give them ability to optimize the uh, investment in the marketing, not based on, not only based on the conversion from uh, event uh, available on the landing pages, uh, which is like on the tracking part, but also on the events uh, afterwards. Uh, quality events uh, like uh, qualification of the lead uh, that we do on the outside and uh, 
initial conversations, uh, uh, signing up the agreement, and uh, further in the final production of so the activity. Uh, and uh, by connecting the like the, these two points, we were, uh, we believe that we can actually uh, optimize our traffic and our force much better than uh, just looking into one event. And uh, in order to satisfy it, uh, we uh, uh, work in collaboration with the data engineering, external data engineering team, which uh, brought us a data warehouse set up based on the uh, Postgres. Maybe I will switch uh, the slide in order, in order to describe the setup that we have a bit better. So uh, what you see here, this is our old setup and how it was done. Uh, basically, we have MySQL database as the database where we stored all our operation data. We used to have Segment as a web tracking tool, uh, and we had Google Analytics as a separate web tracking tool. Uh, uh, segment uh, consumed the data from uh, basically tracking data and also it combined the data with uh, MySQL IDs and then dumped the data into the Postgres. Afterwards, uh, data in Postgres was uh, uh, transformed uh, and combined and mixed with the data from the other data sources and stored again in Postgres but in the reporting layer. And from reporting layer, data was taken into the visualization tool, a tool called Cycle. It's highly integrated with Postgres and com com comparatively a good tool if you focus on Postgres. However, this setup had a big disadvantage uh, because all the transformations was done with ATL scripts. Uh, and these ATL scripts were something that uh, not accessible to the BI people at the company at that moment uh, because they required special skills, especially in, in, data, in, data, in data engineering, like basically writing Python, ATL transformations. Uh, we always needed uh, support from data engineering. Uh, and uh, it uh, slows us, uh, slowed it, uh, us down significantly uh, because like in order to add additional dimension or surface new metric in the reporting layer, we always need to wait, uh, needed to wait uh, data engineers to help us to actually adjust the scripts. And uh, on the other hand, uh, also ATL scripts were in charge of the, uh, fetching the data from the external data sources like uh, Facebook, AdWords, uh, manual input of the costs of marketing costs uh, from the Google sheet. Uh, and uh, this part of the, uh, of the system was also not super reliable just because APIs or data points, they tend, tend to change. And when it comes to manual input, uh, people tend to do mistakes in manual input, so they confuse us with non-performance, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, this is the really unstable uh, configuration. And when something uh, went wrong there, uh, we again, we were depending on the data engineering team uh, and uh, this resource was not super available to us at that moment. And over time, what happened? Uh, we uh, got super slow in terms of the report delivery. So like uh, some business stakeholders, they were disappointed. Oh, it was a pain for them to come to the business intelligence team and ask for something just because they knew that the reply will come, but super late. And on the other side, hiccups with the connections and the transformations that happened, they uh, uh, corrupted the data in the data warehouse and it was no longer a source of truth uh, for the company and trust in the data was basically destroyed. So if in short, what we were, uh, with the first version of the data warehouse, we had it working for some time, but over time, uh, due to uh, flows in the setup or, uh, for flows that didn't actually satisfy uh, the demand we have, we were in the situation when we, we were always trying to catch up the running away train. And uh, it could not last long and uh, company management decided to look for solution and uh, they sought for exter external uh, help and uh, the help was found. We got referred to Verva uh, and they were recommended as experienced data professionals uh, who actually had great successes with multiple startups here in Berlin. And after some uh, conversations with them, they looked deeper into our problems and our uh, projects. Uh, they were able to set up the team uh, and uh, tailor uh, this team capabilities and like uh, the project uh, that we were running together uh, towards our needs. And eventually uh, we ended up in quite successful setup. Uh, also, uh, in meanwhile, when we were like building this uh, new solution, uh, we got, uh, 
introduced to Fivetron and Snowflake. Uh, of course, we considered some other tools, uh, but uh, in the end, uh, Fivetron and Snowflake, they uh, uh, were chosen due to the main factors, which are simplicity, reliability, and uh, scalability. So uh, we will go into the details a bit later, but the key thing, so these tools can be used without any uh, in-house data engineers at all. But maybe in order to like provide you a better picture of how the project ran, uh, we can uh, hear like uh, it's from Vera's side. And Christian, I pass my word to you. Hi. Thank you very much, Alex. Yeah, I can share some uh, some some info why we uh, decided to do it like that. So I think first of all, the situation that you described is very very common in the market. And I'm not saying that because I woke up this morning and I believe it. No, we have seen it in almost 300 projects in the last years. It's a very common scenario. People and companies run into something we call a maintenance nightmare. So even though the technological foundation can actually do all the work theoretically, they still run into this. And this is because in reality, it's much harder than what people think. You know, everybody can spawn a database these days. That's not the biggest thing of, for example, Snowflake. But the problem is making this right, making it fast, making it act under all situations, like this is exactly what I need, reliable source for data, fast, scalable, and so on. This is much more complicated than what it sounds. And I think this is a situation that we also found at home day back then. The second thing that you mentioned is also super important, also a classic. We call it the data vicious circle. It's something when you basically send data to somebody else and that person you know, sees maybe an error in that and stuff like that must be wrong and everybody can see that this is wrong, blah, blah, blah. People will lose trust in that. And when people lose trust in their data, they will basically stop asking you or it might be also be like you described, you know, people don't want to come to you knowing that they have to wait for it either a long time or that they bug you every single day with hundreds of things. And there's a lot of stuff that you can do against that, but it takes more time and it takes experience. And so long story short, what we did at that time was we tried to implement a self-service culture with you guys. So what it means is that people find a setup they can work on their own without requiring massive IT resources or BI or analyst resources. The second thing is that some of the issues like the reliability, the maintenance problems, and you know the, the difficulties with some connectors that you mentioned earlier is um, due to a setup, a classic setup. Like back in the days, like maybe five years ago, ETL was the main thing. It was like, you know, extracting data from somewhere, transforming it and then loading it into a fast database, ideally, and sometimes not even the database was fast. But the problem is with this approach, it's very classic. Nowadays, you have data bases or warehouses, which are much, much, much faster, like for example, Snowflake and others out there. And the point is you should really make sure that you use the power they have. So what we did is we changed that, we flipped it. We didn't say ETL is what we're going to do. We said ELT is what we're going to do. So the transformations, all the, the business logic magic, all the crazy stuff sort of happens inside the warehouse already. And that makes it much more easy, much more scalable, and also much more flexible because you don't have to pre-aggregate data crazily before you do that. You can basically work with a lot of very granular data all the way along. And in that scenario, not only Fivetran uh, and Snowflake fit very well, but it's also a cultural thing that you guys basically need to overcome that moment in time when the company thinks there's an analyst and that's th their job to make me happy and give me data. That's fundamentally wrong. That's sort of from yesterday. And I think putting all that into, into a box and saying, okay, guys, this is where you stand. This is where you want to go, dear colleagues from home day. This is essentially what we did together with them. Alex, want to take it back? Yeah, I guess uh, I can walk through the details of the setup. Uh, 
one second. Yeah, here we go. Uh, thank you, Christian, for the introduction of the project and how it was done and the main intentions there. And now maybe the interesting part, this is the exact details of what has changed there. So the picture looks similar at first glance, but uh, in, in details, uh, we have a significant change, which I will explain. So now the core of the new data warehouse is Snowflake. This is a place where we try to store all the data available to us from all the uh, imaginable data sources. Uh, we still have the same data sources, so pretty much the same data sources as MySQL as our storage of the operational data, Facebook, AdWords, uh, Google Sheets as uh, one of many, uh, multiple of many uh, data sources which are used by marketing teams. Uh, we have uh, Google Analytics and Google BigQuery as a source of the tracking data, and uh, we actually started to exploit Google Analytics much more and decided to use it as the only uh, web tracking tool we have. And uh, in order to connect everything, we use Fivetran, which actually uh, does one simple thing. It basically copy-paste uh, the data from the data sources into the data, uh, data warehouse, in our case, in Snowflake. Uh, it does it regularly, reliably, and it also uh, takes care of the synchronization. Connections there are comparatively easy to do, and they usually require like uh, just adding some credentials so to the given database and of course the API addresses, etc. But uh, it doesn't take ages, it doesn't require any special skills, so like knowing all the Linux command in the world and uh, super easy to maintain. And uh, this is a big thing for us. Now we control the extract part uh, in the our setup. Uh, we can get data without any data engineers at all. Uh, once data is stored in Snowflake, uh, in slow, within the Snowflake, we do the, all the transformations. Uh, we just uh, basically are using the normal SQL syntax uh, and uh, transform the raw data into the uh, BI applied uh, uh, tables, like in uh, classical dimensional, like star schema way. Uh, and then we use the kind of transform data with Tableau, which is state of the art uh, data visualization and data analytics tool. And uh, this is basically our front end to the business users. Uh, and altogether, uh, we achieved a new state of the system, which is, uh, first of all, uh, requires significantly almost no hassle, uh, significantly less or almost no hassle and hardcore maintenance just because uh, key parts of the system, they are uh, maintained by the service providers, uh, in this case, five channel Snowflake, and uh, they're easy, easy to adjust and don't require any like super specific knowledge in terms of the data engineering uh, DevOps or whatsoever. Uh, we are SBI team now in full control of the data model. So basically, uh, we don't need data engineering support to do the transformation within the data model just because everything is done within Snowflake with normal SQL and any single business intelligence uh, person, they, they know SQL, or at least I, I consider it as a must have for the BI people. Uh, and uh, we do this transformation in the way it is suitable for us and business needs. So rather than it is suitable for the system and performance optimization. Uh, of course, we think about performance when all these things, but uh, it's a secondary topic for us. Uh, we do the things the way they work. They bring value rather than the things uh, the way it is uh, supposed to work in the given infrastructure setup. And uh, we also have the full uh, control over the report distribution with Tableau. Again, we don't, uh, our reporting layer doesn't depend on the, anybody else but us. And we can uh, do the changes quickly and provide the results with Tableau or in uh, some, other, some other cases and other ways to the uh, business users. And what did it give us? Maybe it's like repetition of the same thing once again, but it's really important to understand the culture change that happened. Uh, thanks to the end time ownership of the uh, business intelligence stack and low maintenance, we came to a state of the agile BI. Uh, like I do some uh, connections here with like uh, agile methods in uh, development, uh, but I'm just using the main principles to explain this. So what happened to us? We became uh, business impact driven. We now think about uh, what is actually relevant for the business first, what kind of impact the metric or KPI brings to the people or analysis brings to the people, rather than thinking over the way, okay, if we have it already in the database, if it's hard to extract or something else, 
this is completely secondary issue right now and uh, thanks to the easiness of surfacing the data. Uh, we don't have uh, to do any uh, infrastructure driven trade-offs for the metrics. Uh, we just, it, it's not relevant to us anymore. Uh, we are quick. Uh, in the given setup, again, thanks to the ability to control every single step uh, and making uh, changes there comparatively quickly, uh, we are able to surface new metrics or uh, answer the requests uh, from the business sites within one hour. It's like most common case, even usually like uh, if the question is simple, so it can happen like five minutes, two minutes, whatever. Uh, if the question requires some report, uh, so like some dashboard activity with the uh, with Tableau, so it yeah, might take one hour. But this is the thing. This is a completely different approach. So like it, it used to be days, it used to be weeks. Now it's one hour. Uh, uh, thanks again to the easiness of change, we don't feel the pain of the change anymore. We Instead of uh, uh, conversation with stakeholders, when you have a conversation, we, like your report is nice, but I need this and this additional metrics. And uh, as a business intelligence guy who like uh, really uh, trapped with the hard to maintain infrastructure, you feel like pain. Oh, why do you need this additional metrics? It's why? Uh, now, when you have such conversations, you appreciate this uh, additional insight, additional input that from the business stakeholders uh, that like, because your innate quality is to make them happy. And this is, I guess, a majority of us love business intelligence like, because customer satisfaction is so close and uh, with easiness of change and adapting to their needs, we are uh, bringing this happiness quite often and it's really cool. And uh, in the end, we also became lean. Uh, we don't spend time with, uh, on infrastructure maintenance or idling uh, while we need to get the metric or certain dimension. We actually do the analysis, we do the transformations, we do that brings impact uh, instead of waiting, instead of waiting time. And what happened? So if before we were trying out to catch the train, now we're driving our bus and uh, it feels really good. And apart from feeling good, uh, of course, uh, there's certain uh, real things that happen to the company. Uh, like last year, uh, when we had the traditional feedback rounds in the end of the year, uh, the key thing uh, I heard from my colleagues that they said, now we actually do have a BI at the company. Uh, and uh, in terms of the behavior, we changed. People uh, came to ask questions, they come to us often they uh, have uh, questions that uh, they know that they will have timely answers to. Uh, and they enjoy this routine. They uh, come more and more often just because it's easy for them. It's not a pain anymore. Uh, and uh, everybody's curious and people want to know uh, numbers and uh, make number two decisions. And in general, faith in data in this way is restored. So. Uh, they can use data, they can use numbers, and the numbers are uh, correct uh, because we take full responsibility there. And speaking of real outputs or like tangible things uh, that we brought to the company like during the last half a year, uh, I would highlight three items. Uh, one is a new pricing strategy uh, that we uh, fueled with the data uh, altogether. Uh, basically, before we had a situation when we knew, uh, like on the gut feeling, uh, feeling level, uh, prices, uh, agents, uh, real, real estate agents commissions uh, in the certain counties, states of Germany. Uh, and on the other hand, we had uh, knowledge over the distribution of uh, our uh, real estate agents, home real estate agents. And these two things live um, uh, somehow independently. And uh, by uh, like introducing the data warehouse, uh, we were able to connect uh, two systems. In this case, it was uh, our uh, Postgres database uh, that we use to accumulate data about the market, uh, basically uh, looking into the data sources like uh, on day 24, which is like main listing portals for the properties where people list their properties and try to sell something. Uh, and uh, on one hand, and our operational base uh, on the other hand, 
and we were able to connect a knowledge uh, or like data with locations to the data with prices. And uh, using this and uh, providing it to the decision makers, uh, uh, we were able to fill up the new pricing strategy where we basically decide for each given region where we present. Uh, we have a price on our side which is lower than market. And uh, we, uh, this price is not just gut feeling defined, but defined by real numbers, by the real commissions that we know. Uh, another example, it's uh, of this exploration of a similar uh, uh, Give yep. me one second, Alex. Um, just a brief reminder to everyone in the audience, if you have any questions, use that question section, put them in on the right side, click on the small icon, and then you can put in questions and we'll see exactly um, what you guys want to know. Take it on. Okay. Thank you, Christian. Uh, yeah, second item is expansion strategy. Uh, here at Home Day, uh, for us, it is really important to understand where we need to have our real estate agents. Uh, apparently, uh, you need to have agent where you have the properties to sell. And again, uh, this is like obvious uh, thing, but we always make decisions based on our gut feeling or in the best case, uh, we use the, to hire realtors in the most populated areas of Germany, which is kind of makes sense, but it doesn't really reflect the situation in the market. And uh, why it was happening? Just because um, uh, we uh, have our geographical data disconnected from the uh, operational data. And uh, again, by mixing our uh, geographical stuff uh, with the operational, we were able to surface comparatively easy dashboard, which is uh, which showing number of leads coming from the given uh, location, uh, combining with the uh, coverage of this location by uh, real estate agents of Home Day. Uh, and altogether, it gave us a picture, uh, like colored picture of Germany, uh, which shows which uh, regions we covered, which regions we need to cover in terms of like least intensity from there uh, and uh, connection to the other uh, real estate agents we have at Home Day. And uh, this dashboard became our guiding line uh, for uh, expansion. And uh, what it gave to us, it actually helped us to hire people in a smart way rather than a hard way. So instead of trying to cover all the uh, areas in Germany uh, where we like consider like more or less, uh, as more or less significant, we hire people in the areas where we do know that we have properties to sell or they most likely will appear there. And uh, it allows us to cover Germany in the way of like satisfying 80% of demand with just 20% of the coverage, uh, like normal Pareto rule. And uh, last but not the least, uh, we, uh, thanks to flexibility of the setup, we were able to uh, um, uh, introduce the offline uh, marketing uh, monitoring, uh, and it also defined the our fly marketing strategy. Uh, in short, uh, we were planning to run a TV campaign for a while, and we actually did it uh, at the end of the last year. And uh, before the TV campaign, with the new uh, data warehouse setup, we were able to uh, integrate uh, TV campaign related metrics. First of all, uh, of course, uh, we all care about the uh, traffic is used by the TV campaign, by the TV spots you show on the air. And uh, due to the fact that we uh, were in full control of the data warehouse and data model, uh, we just consumed the data source provided from the partner with the TV spots uh, and integrated it with the, our data model uh, and surfaced the respective metrics. So uh, for the marketing, uh, uh, fully on our own, we managed to uh, provide the transparency in super short time. In that case, it took only one month with uh, all the quality assurance efforts, uh, like from the very beginning, like from the scratch when we know that we, this is the partner uh, who will provide us the data and uh, to the very end when the data was available and tested and was, everything was working. Uh, and uh, Thanks to this data and thanks to this capability of measuring the impact of the TV campaign and other offline sources, uh, we uh, were major, uh, we managed to actually uh, make a quick and really important uh, decision for us when it comes to the TV campaign. When we ran the TV campaign, we understood that actually traffic or leads we invoke uh, uh, there were like in the regions 
that surprisingly were not covered yet. Like we had realtor, we, like the realtors were coming there on our side, but at the moment we didn't have them there, and. Uh, that's why uh, efficiency of the, of the TV campaign was extremely low and we uh, managed to make a decision of stopping the TV campaign, even if the kind of paradoxical outcome there, uh, but we stopped the TV campaign and uh, in order to hire realtors in the regions uh, that we consider as the important ones uh, first and uh, then they're uh, doing the TV campaign again. And by doing so, we save thousands of, uh, hundreds of thousands of euros for the company. And again, uh, this was implemented in like weeks and uh, uh, we, uh, easiness of use and uh, uh, speed of introduction was the key to success here. Maybe to wrap up uh, everything, uh, thanks to the new uh, business intelligence setup, now we have a situation when uh, we have uh, low maintenance uh, of the data stack. Uh, we can focus and spend time on actually doing the data modeling and surfacing the metrics, providing the reports. And all this increases the speed of delivery, uh, foster the feedback chains, and it makes people more satisfied with the business intelligence or with data. And once people are satisfied or happy with data, they tend to use it more. And this is a cycle of life. And like it makes uh, the uh, uh, company like Home Day uh, use, uh, like uh, really utilizing the data. And uh, I, I suppose that it's going to be one of our uh, key uh, uh, USPs or like key uh, competitive advantages in the future. By saying cool. so, I would like to say, yeah, that's done, I guess, on my side. Thank you very much, Alex. So I think that was an impressive content that you guys saw how it completely changed the way Home Day does BI back then and today. Um, so we already got three questions from Theo. If anybody else has a question, just use the questions function on the right side and you can put in your question and we'll try to get all of them answered by today. And if not, we'll follow up on them and make sure you still get your answer. So shall we maybe start with a, with a I guess with an easy one to warm up for Fivetran. What does it take to add a connector to a non-standard data source for you guys like Pipedrive? Yeah, great question. So. First of all, we're always adding new connectors to the whole directory of connectors we support. So even if you're a customer or not a customer, let us know if there's a connector that you're looking for. We keep a list and we prioritize the ones that are highest on the list um, that has the most demand and we're releasing you know, four to six a month. So we're coming out with quite a lot. That being said, um, if it's not a connector that we support, we do have quite a number of ways of still getting in the data. Um, some simple ones, sometimes services have databases underneath them. We can correct, connect directly to those databases. Um, other times, they may have some sort of file export to an S3 bucket or Google Cloud Storage or something like that. We can connect to that file storage service. We can pull the data in from there. Um, other tools have automated email reports that can go out. You can schedule it so you know a CSV is sent to you by email, let's say every morning. Um, we have an email connector. You can connect to that, grab the email, grab the data that way. We'll bring it into the warehouse. And then the third or the kind of the final option is a generic API connector. So our answer to a generic API connector is actually supporting functions. So Microsoft has Azure functions. Um, AWS has uh, Lambda functions. Uh, Google has Google Cloud functions. These are little serverless functions where you can write the code to query a particular API in that function. So Fivetran is not a professional service company. We're a tool. You would either need to write the code to query the API yourself or bring in a consultancy, perhaps such as Laura, um, to do that work for you. But we have a connector to the function. So that means Fivetran will take care of all of the scheduling of that function. Um, managing the API secrets in a very secure way, and then loading that data into your warehouse. So in the case that it's uh, the only way to connect is through an API and it's something we don't yet support, that'll, you know, our, our part will get you half of the way there and you'll still have to do some extra work on your side. Great. 
Perfect. Thank you, Nate. Looking at the time, I think we just get it on right away. I'll briefly take on the first two questions. How do you ensure um, that the data model is as simple as possible for future querying and you deal with varied data sources and a complex business model? And that goes a little bit hand in hand with the second question. What's the pros and cons of setting up BI infrastructure before simplifying the data source? Maybe starting briefly with the second. Well, I think it's a little bit key to not uh, get too much hooked into something. So whether it's Salesforce or Pipedrive or something, the underlying data structure will be totally different. But in the end, both talk about a lead or an opportunity or a deal. So what I mean by this is that if you simplify, if you change your data model and you don't just simply drop everything they have into your warehouse, house and start working with it right away, then you can adapt and you can a little bit uh, go away from the super specifics of one tool, becoming a little bit more, um, let's say, well-grounded for other similar tools as well. Um, wh where the ultimate idea on whether exactly when you do it is also, of course, a business decision that's not so crazily a technical decision, but I don't think it makes sense to wait until you have changed everything to your best liking, because in reality, that will not happen. The first question, how do we ensure a proper data modeling? I think that's a too much of a big topic for today in detail, but I can give you two advices from, from, uh, from doing it in practice. First of all, definitely make a plan before you start. It's much harder than it sounds. You know, everybody can learn how to program in a couple of hours with a few lines of code, but you will not be able at all to write any code that is production ready for anybody else in a difficult, complex setup. It takes time, it takes training. There is resources on that, but it's creepy resources. There's external guys like us which can, who can help you with that. But at the end of the day, make sure that you follow a very structured process with potentially layers, right? So you don't want to do everything in one step, try to break it off, try to break it into small pieces that you do. And also, um, so that you can know when something breaks, when something is wrong, when something has a wrong output, you know where to look. Is it a transformation error in terms of the format of the field, for example, or is it just a different uh, result than I expected? Do I need to check the business logic? Do I need to check the source import? And all this got a lot easier with the ELT nowadays. If you have further questions for that, feel super happy to uh, reach out afterwards. We have one more question for, I would guess for Snowflake, I see that. Um, so, the first question was, I understand this is about Fivetran and Snowflake, but is there a structure with Google BigQuery and Google Data Studio to a comparable solution or put it in a little different way? What is the advantage of Fivetran and Snowflake compared to the Google structure? Shall I take this one? <clears throat> um, first of all, Fivetran and Snowflake have a very good uh, partner relationship, so we have very well fitting uh, solutions here. And in general, um, Snowflake is cloud independent, so am I still connected? Yeah, I'm still connected, sorry. So you have the choice which cloud to use, and you're not locked in into a specific cloud, so in terms of regulations that may come up or whatever, uh, future will bring you uh, free to really choose the cloud um, you want to use for your uh, data warehouse as a service. Mm -hmm. And maybe a last tiny addition on that, well, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of you know content out there in the web saying which warehouse is a little faster and all these kind of things. But I can just give you the advice: don't only look at it from that perspective, but really understand what you're going to do. The independency of both Fivetran, well, obviously as an external tool, as anyways, but also of Snowflake running in any cloud is super important and makes a lot of sense. Um, However, the, the data studio part, I think that's really something different, right? That's the visualization part. It doesn't really help you a lot with modeling or anything. So that can be used with Snowflake, even if Snowflake is hosted in AWS and Google, well, data studio is anyway sort of on its own, right? You don't host it on your own anyways. Yeah, and I can speak a little bit as well to the yeah. difference of using Google Transfer Service versus Fivetran. Um, Google Transfer Service, I think in a lot of cases, can only sync new or change data once per day. Um, and in some cases, you need to purchase, I think, Google 360 to get um, more detailed information. And there's some sampling that they give you with the regular um, public reporting API for Google Analytics, for example, um, that Fivetran is able to, to alleviate. And then on the case of using you know, BigQuery versus Snowflake, um, 
BigQuery is also low maintenance, but it really doesn't have the optimization features that Snowflake does. Um, once you get into bigger scales for managing your costs properly, um, Snowflake has incredible ability to deal with JSON data um, where you can break it apart into tables, turn it into something called variant type. Um, yeah, and the other thing is that if you're using Google Transfer Service, that works for all of the Google products, but it's not gonna work for things like Marketo or Salesforce or, or other sources that are not um, in the Google suite. Cool, uh, great. Well, so, yeah? <laughs> So, sorry, Christian, I also can say a couple of words here just because uh, surprisingly I had experience with both setup uh, in my life. And uh, what I can say in terms of the comparing the current setup and uh, uh, Google driven setup right now. So we have much uh, easier to uh, operate uh, data model just because in uh, BigQuery setup you have one significant limitation. You always need to think about the partitioning of your data by dates and it applies a lot of limitations there. Also, uploading the data into the data warehouse is not that obvious and straightforward, uh, again, because of the partitioning, because you always need to keep it uh, there. And with Snowflake, we don't have this problem because partitioning is dynamic. Uh, computation power is also dynamically allocated. And uh, overall, after some time, I would say my experience with Snowflake is uh, better than in comparison with BigQuery. Great, thanks for the for the advice and your experience from, from doing it practically on both sides of the table. Um, so looking at the time, I think we wanna, we're a little bit over, but we wanna respect everybody's time. So I think we need to make a cut here. However, two or three last important things. Alex, could you flip one slide further? There's contact details for all of us. So if you have any questions specifically to whatever this, us home day five trend snowflake just reach out afterwards and send us a quick note and we will see what we can do for you don't forget that both tools presented here five trend and snowflake have free trials so you can easily go to the website you know just click a button and it's basically there remember it's not that easy as it looks at first so if you really want to do that and scalable proper production setup does much more than just that one click of a button well unfortunately or fortunately i don't know you see it However, if you have any questions about how that works with them, just reach them out. So one last note, you will get all the slides, you will get the recording sent afterwards so you can recheck it, you can read everything one more time. And again, if you have any questions, just let us know. Thank you so much for being here today. We'll hope to see you soon again. We'll be happy to hear from your experience. If you agree to what we said or you don't agree, just put it in, in an email, just send a brief one-liner or something towards the addresses you see. We'll be super happy to hear any feedback from you guys. So thanks a lot again and have an amazing day. See you soon, hopefully, and keep on using data for getting really successful out there. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.